Hello and welcome to today's video in which we're going to look at the case statement, case of statement here in um, SCL. Uh, it is pretty much in all other programming languages you would call it a switch case statement. In here we call it a case of a statement. So what I have right now like you, what you can already see here is a function that I built. In this function, I have a mode input, right? Mode input uh, that is currently zero. I have um, a mode name as an output that is currently off. I have a speed as an output here, zero, zero. I have a green light that is true currently. I have a yellow light that's false, false or orange light, false, red light, false. So depending on the mode that we set our system to, it could be a switch, right? Could be a position switch, could be on a display that you um, just on the HMI hammer in the, uh, the, the mode as a number. Let's change this mode to, for example, mode number one. Up, and you see my outputs here change. Now my mode is one, so we have activated mode with the name slow. Speed is 250, the green light is true, it's still on. The yellow light is also true, indicating, hey, the motor is running at slow speed. Orange light is off, red light is off. I can switch to the other modes too. I have, I think, three modes. Mode number two is medium, 400 RPM. Um, Green light is true, saying, hey, machine is on, no error. Yellow light is off and orange light is on. Orange light indicating, hey, it's medium speed and red light is off. I have more modes. I have mode fast, 750 RPM. Green light is on, yellow light and orange light indicating, hey, it's the fast mode. Red light is still off because the red light in our case is reserved for four, for example, which is we don't have that mode, which leads to an error. Right, this is mode error. We don't have speed. All the lights are off except the red one. The, one, the red one stays on. <clears throat> so that is also the case for five. Uh, wait, it's short integer, so can't go too high. Eighty-seven, for example. Here we go. This is all error mode. Right. Um, let's go back to a mode that is not an error medium here in this case. So this so far, this program has been built in an if statement condition. Uh, so let's have a look at this. If the mode is zero, please uh, set this mode name, set this speed and turn on the green light. If the mode is one, it's slow mode, Is this is the RPM, this is green light, this is yellow light. Um, mode is two and so on and so on. So for each state of the mode, you see it here, for each state of the mode, we have basically an equal sign and an if um uh, the, an if, assi uh, if statement and an if statement. Now, the first problem that I see here, we have greater or equal than four, which is right now the cases smaller than zero are not covered in here. Just mathematically looking at this, smaller than zero is not covered. So if I type in here something smaller than zero, minus nine, for example, we do not go into the error state. All the LEDs will go off and the speed will also turn to zero because um, Boolean and uh, well, all numbers, except for strings, everything is reset to zero um, if it is not assigned inside the function. So minus nine, we're not going in here anywhere. So we're resetting everything because we are having a function which sets everything back to zero, except for strings. That's a little bit strange, but that's how it is. Good. So to catch that, of course, we would need to change here our if statements, right? But it would even be better to not work in this case with if statements. We can simply change this program and make it way more efficient, way easier than this stuff here. Because we always ha ask for the same thing here. Mode is one, mode is two, mode is three, mode is four, mode is greater, equal four. Um, this mode is a so-called switch, right? Is a so-called switch. If it is zero, do this. If it is one, do this. If it is two, do this. If it is three, do this, and so on and so on. Um, that's a switch or easier said, if zero, do this. If one, do this. If two, do this. If three, do this. If four, do this. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Um, instead of doing all if statements, we can have this case statement. So what I will do now, is I will take this program here, I will take this function and just um, just duplicate it, copy, paste, rename it to case, right? So 
Uh, and now let's go into this case statement because I want the same behavior. I want this if it's zero. I want this if it's one. If this is this if it's two, this if it's, this if it's three, this if it's greater or equal four. Basically, this is our error statement here. If it's not zero, one, two, or three. In every other case, have it an error, right? Those are our cases, right? Those are our cases. That's what we use in case statement for. So let's do it, case, uh, case of statement here. Now, this case statement asks for a variable. That's the first thing. This variable is the switch. In all other programming languages that I know, this is called a switch. And this switch is really switching over, hey, this is zero, do this, one, do this, two, do this, three, do this, and so on. So what is our switch? In our case, of course, the same thing we are asking for in every if statement. So the mode. So case mode of if mode is one, do this. If mode right now is two until four, so two, three, or four, do this. In every other case, do this. That's how it works. So what did I want? I want mode zero. It should do something. I want mode one. It should do something. I want mode two. It should do something. I want mode three do something and you see it automatically um, corrects how I write it. So it automatically puts this back here in this place. <clears throat> Else do this. That's the last scenario here. That's if it if we do not have zero, one, two, or three, we're doing this. And so in any, any other case, that means minus 3400 or minus 30 because we have a short integer, do this. If we have four, do this, five, do this, six, do this. So in any other case, except for these, do this. So what I need to do now is, of course, I take my logic down here, copy and paste. I simply copy and paste. Uh, since I have those semicolons already, I do not need those up here. I will just take the logic that I had, right? Because we're just replacing the if statements. That's how it is. Pretty simple. Yep. Boop. And the last one, the error case here. Whoops. The three, I forgot the three. Where's the three? Come here, you number three. God damn it. Control C, Control V. So here we go. Just need to get rid of this. Just need to get, I just replaced all those if statements. You see the if statements, this can get quite confusing, quite large code. This up here is way easier to read, right? If mode is zero, do this. If mode is one, do this. If mode is two, do this. If mode is three, do this. If mode is anything else, do this. That's it, right? That's the case statement. There's many, many applications for this. Um, yeah, this is just one. Of course, there's many, many, many more ways. Um, yeah, let's let's replace it first, and then I'll explain one or more two more things about this. So. In our main function, just a little special thing. Usually what would I do? I have a new function, so I take the function, I put it in a new network, and now I put all my inputs, outputs that use this function on here. I don't need to do that. Just a general thing in TR Portal, probably you didn't know that. If you have a function and you want to replace it with another function, you can just select the name here, double click on it, and say, hey, what function do you want to replace it with? I want I don't want this if function that I used before. I want the improved case function. So what do I do? Click on the case, go in there, done. Now it's replaced already with all the inputs, outputs where the name is the same. So in before, in the if statement, in my if function, it was named mode name. So it takes over, uh, it takes the connected parameter over to the case statement here. Pretty useful, pretty useful. Of course, it's a rare case that you replace a function with the same function just that is written in a different way but it is quite useful if you need it at some point for versioning for example or replacing your function with a colleagues so now i have this i can download <coughs> i can finish let's go online let's observe this so right now this is my case statement uh, my case function here i can change the mode let's put the mode for example to one 
and you see now we're in slow it's 250 and all the lights everything it behaves the same way it's just an easier code um, let's say we have six which is an error and you see also the error adjusted here and works accordingly and also the error with negative numbers works perfectly fine because we are catching at the uh, all other statements in this else statement right so the else statement should be active right now if i go in here let's see so i can see the mode is currently minus three which cannot be found here so we're going into this else statement and you see it happening here in the back this is the status of those variables if i change it i'm just changing it in a variable uh, in 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 my database here on the right if i go to case one for example you see case is one right now so we're going in here let's see the others case zero case is zero so we're going in here right that's the thing that's how it works pretty simple pretty easy if you ask me um nothing really special about this it is different than in many other programming languages right it is different in that sense so <laughs> If you know switch case statements from other programming languages, here's the thing. You usually have not this else. You would have the default. Default is, hey, do this in case none of these is there, which is the same thing as the else here. It's just a different word. The second thing, very special here, um, in every case, so in case zero, you do not need to make what you usually have in all other or most other programming languages. You have a return here in the end. Right. This return means, hey, if the, case, if the case mode is zero right now, go through this. And then if the return is true, then jump uh, after here. If this is not there, we are actually going in zero. We're doing this and then we're continuing until we see the return or the end. No return needed here or break or return. Both exist. Um, needed here. So that's convenient, but it limits your possibilities a little bit maybe the last thing let's see if i can hook that up here in resources um yeah i won't need to call both i think yeah give me a second because i want to show you something a little bit interesting actually um why do we need a case statement it is easier written like written and read for you physically for for the operator for the programmer um it's just easier to use than just if, 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 if. And for the code, it's more efficient as well. Which a lot of people say, hey, this makes your code a billion times more um, efficient. Let's look actually in the resources. I can hook up, I can open the resources that are reserved for this function because that's how the PLC works. It doesn't really go into the code and then calculates while doing it. It calculates in before when you compile and download how much work memory does this function need to operate, which is quite fascinating. It's completely different than how other programs work, but here it's quite fascinating. And I can see how much memory do my functions take. And here's, uh, it's hard to see, it's pretty small there, but that's okay. I will just read out the numbers. Um, the storage settings, the case statement takes load memory 5,869 byte. The load memory is the store, is how much memory does it take on the SD card of the PLC? So how much storage does it take to just load it there? It just sits there and it takes 5,869 bytes. The if statement here is approximately 400 bytes more. So it's 6,239 bytes, right? So it's almost 10% more code uh, that is sitting on the machine which is already quite a lot. Like if you have hundreds of functions, that will be quite a lot. So if statements are actually bigger, which makes sense because you have more lines of code, you have more things to write there. The compiler needs more space to put that program on the machine. What fascinates me um, is the following. We have the code work memory. So how much calculation power does the function need? And what I can see here is those are almost the same. We have the if statement is even three byte smaller than the switch case statement. So the if case, uh, the if statements, they're actually more efficient if it comes to calculating. 
Very strange. I always thought, I always figured that the case statement is the most efficient. I don't know what Siemens does here for strange things, that the case statement is less efficient, but it seems like that that's what it is. I can just use and see the work memory here that is given. Pretty strange because whenever I read about it, the case statements, switch case statements are the most efficient thing you can do. Something strange going on here. They are actually not. Of course, they're all efficient. They're all more than efficient, so that's perfectly fine. I just want to go a little bit in detail here because I read some comments in the last videos that said, hey, the loops are not efficient, and so the case statement is always the most efficient. Depends on how you use it. Highly depends on how you use it. The 1500s, their calculation power is so big that you don't really care, except your program is very, very, very huge. And in the other case, you should be fine. <clears throat> Good. So much for switch case statements. Um, just one more thing in my own sense that I just um, opened today, actually, uh, because I make a lot of videos and wait before before. Thanks for watching. If you don't want to listen to the rest, have a nice day. See you in the next video. Uh, but one thing um, that I prepared uh, to con go on with those videos because they are quite some effort and take time um, and i want to go on forever basically and even improve more i have made some if you want to help me out right you if you want to help me out you can just watch the videos i i that that's perfectly fine spread the word tell your colleagues tell your friends hey this youtube channel is great um of course that's what everyone did already the last thing what's new is that i opened a so-called gofundme so if you want to help me out and this is really just if you want to do it. If not, perfectly fine. If you want to help me out, I have put a link in the description below uh, where you can click and this will open the website and there you can say Jetzt Spenden, which is German. There's also an English version here. There is also a donate now. So you can give me one or two bucks, perfectly fine. Zero is also perfectly fine. This is just something because everyone is so grateful I'm doing those videos and I just want to take some advantage, not, not advantage of it, but some value out of it for me. Uh, and I want to go on with those videos. So I somehow need to market them, right? Uh, that sounds like an excuse. Perfectly fine if you don't do it, but the link is down there. Uh, anyway, Thank you all so much for watching. Um, I will see you in the next video. If you still have questions, put them in the comments below. If you liked it, leave a like. Do not forget to subscribe and share. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Um, <laughs>